today I'm going to show you the art of gentle painting and I'm going to use some inks and they're just either an art spectrum ink this is burnt sienna this one's a Winsor and Newton and it's in black and I've got a blue and it's just called blue and it's an art spectrum one. It's a bit like an ultramarine blue. And I may or may not use some watercolour, but basically I'm just going to use those three colours and be quite neutral with this painting. I've got some Banksia nuts and a little bit of... A local native tree I think this was a she oak and a few gum nuts just to inspire me so I'll pop those to one side now you can see that I've taped down my paper it's 300 GSM and it's cold pressed and it's a Canson Montfau the brushes I'm going to use and these are entirely optional just use what you have i'm just going to use a dagger you could use any big flat brush that you like to put down the washes for those that are interested this is art secret number 12. i'll also use this one which is just a round brush i think from memory it's about a number two round and i will possibly be using my script liner which is just a fine O script liner. So anything similar would be fine for this project. You like to find yourself some little dishes. This just is just a lid of some little cakes, I think, that we bought. So I've got some burnt sienna here, some carbon black, and a little bit of the blue in here. Now you can see when you mix the burnt sienna with the blue you can make lovely greens and that's what I'm going to be doing so without further ado let's do this painting I'm going to take my spray bottle and the nozzle is set to droplets and I'm going to give my paper a light spray all over leaving the droplets just there I'm going to pick up my dagger brush and first off, I'm going to pick up some of the ultramarine blue or the blue. And just adding some of those colours to the, the paper in a circular motion. Picking up now a little bit of the sienna. And we're just dropping that in. Almost like a bird's nest, but we're going to actually have a, a circle of native flora. So just adding those colours, a little bit more blue will give me those lovely greens I was talking about. So I'm using this very, very loosely and just starting to create some unidentified like twig lines. Now what I'm going to do is take a tissue and I'm going to just softly press that crumpled tissue onto my work. Lifting off some of those colours. 
going to give me a lovely background to work on. I'll leave a little bit more colour down where I'm going to have my focal point down here. But I just want the other colours just to fade into the background. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to let that one dry naturally and come back to you. So we're all dry and you can see how gentle the background looks, very subtle. So I'm going to paint some gum leaves and possibly some banksia leaves and we'll just see what happens, maybe a banksia, we'll start with that. So I'm just taking a little bit of the burnt sienna and a little bit of the black. Gives me a lovely dark and let's do that. So this is what I'm heading for. Just a Banksia cone, but again, I'm just using them for reference. I'm not that worried about realism. This is my interpretation. Got these lovely knobbly stems that come down, and these little seed pods. So I'm just using my small round. This gorgeous colour. And these little knobbly bits that yeah. stick out. I'm just picking up a little bit of the black, just touching into this banks here, more towards the centre than the outside. Okay, this is a gentle painting, remember, so I'm just going to take my tissue and I'm just going to blot just here and there. Just taking off some of the excess colour. Your little branch is just coming off. See these, how it's got little branches just coming off the side with little knobbly bits on them. So there's more to go on this banks here, but I just want to get some leaves in. So I'm taking a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the burnt sienna to make a lovely green and some water. Now you can do this with watercolours, just don't think because you haven't got ink that you can't do it. You definitely can. All you have to do is mix up some puddles of the colours. So we'll have some Banksia leaves. Now 
they have these little serrations on the side and quite a rounded sort of end on them so it's a good thing if you can actually go out and whatever leaves you're going to do in this gentle painting just take some leaves and just have a look at them Just look at the detail and try just to emulate that it doesn't matter if they're not exact just to give an indication of what they are another one just down here Now while they're still wet, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the burnt sienna and just drop that in. Just add that little bit of a colour. I've got the twist here where the leaf is twisted around. So a little bit of black too might be nice where that twist is. little bit strong so what I'm going to do is take a tissue just blot just adding some of those colors elsewhere on the leaves try and do this while it's still wet if it has dried up just get some clean water and just add a little bit of water And you can just drop into that. Just softening off. Just keeping it all nice and gentle. off. I think that's a little bit too black so I'm just adding a bit more of the brown into that area there. Now just add a few little markations like they have little holes in them sometimes so we can pop that in. And again just a little blot to take off the excess. Now for some gum leaves, I'm just going to add a bit more blue to that mix that we have already mixed. And we're just going to pop a few of those gum leaves in there. Keeping it nice and transparent. Again, picking up a little bit of the burnt sienna, just again while it's still wet. It's blending out if you need to. All nice and soft. I'm 
going to turn the video on a little bit quicker for you while I continue to paint and I think you should have the idea of what gentle painting is by now uh, keeping everything transparent and then we'll come back in and put some more detail I'll slow it down again when I go to do that so everyone I had a bit of a mistake when I was painting this one I had a terrible accident and I'm going to play put that for you in a moment um, I'll do it really quickly so that you don't have to watch it all in um, normal time but I've tried to repair the mistake and it wasn't really successful as you can see so what I've done I've got another painting ready up to the stage that we were up to and I will continue painting it after this little one minute whoopsie part I will carry on painting using this palette because the last palette wasn't successful as you will see I'm going to put the ink in here it's a lower profile so I've got this chance of knocking it over so let's see how we go I guess I'm pretty much there with um, catching up to what I did earlier so I will just carry on just putting some more gum leaves in keeping it nice and transparent as I said earlier Picking up a little bit of that burnt sienna, burnt sienna or sepia, whichever you're using. And then using a little bit of crushed paper towel just to take the excess off. So we're keeping it all very, very gentle. I'm going to change now to a script liner. Here we go. This is your script liner. Uh, just a nice fine brush so that when you wet it, the bristles come together and form a nice point. And I'm just going to use a little bit of that green mix that we made with the burnt sienna and the blue. And let's do a little bit of um, some maybe some tweaks they can go under or over the leaves maybe some on this side too just to balance out the composition Try and keep the lines not too straight. Um, you know, have little bends in them and little tucks. Feel free to pick up a little bit of the warmer colour. Just drop it in every now and again. Add a bit of interest to your leaves. Same over here. 
interest to your tweaks, I should say. And again, just taking off some of the colour will give you some nice texture and make the colours not too strong. Okay, I think I'm happy with how this is going. I'm just on the dirty brush, I'm picking up just a little bit more of that green and pulling some more twigs up at this side. Now when you are doing twigs or um, stems and you want the end to have a very fine ending, start your stroke at this end and pull towards the tip. That way this part is thicker and this part finishes at a nice fine point. Definitely have them overlapping and again a little bit of that warmer colour will really just enhance a little bit. We'll get some more at this side happening. They can come over the leaves, they can go under the leaves. Nothing in nature is perfect, so it creates a lot of interest when you've got them going under and over and adds a little bit of depth to your painting too. I'll leave a little opening there so that I'm not closing it off completely. Again, um, feel free to enhance. You could even add a little bit of the green to these twigs if you wanted to. I think that we can put some veins in our leaves with that same colour. So just adding some veins and again a little bit of softening back. I'm starting at the base of the leaf and working to the tip. Again down here working to the tip Um, by blotting, it makes it less defined. Um, I want to be, my focal point is here, and I'm going to have some birds flying across. So that's what I'm aiming for, and um, we'll just carry on and see how we go. So I've got a turned leaf here. The rain comes through. Then it will come through the other side. And we need a little bit of shading just in here. A little bit strong that colour, I'm just blotting it. I actually dipped my brush into the wrong puddle. So I just wet that and lifted it off which you can do with ink if you can get it off straight away, unlike my um, little faux pas earlier. It was just too heavy. These are just washes, so you can definitely remove the washes if they're not dry. Of course, if you're using watercolour, that's even better. So Banksia leaves have got these little sort of 
veins that come out at an angle, unlike the gums. The gums do have veins, but they're more prominent down the centre. Not too worried about realism here. I just want to give an indication of leaves and um, twigs and just the general bush, you know, the bush floor, which um, that's what I'm trying to do anyway. So we'll see how we go. I, mean, I feel as though we need something in here. I've got some gum blossoms here, so I might just pop some in there too. So this is just the green mix that we were using earlier. We'll put a little gum blossom in here. And again, a little bit of the burnt sienna, just in the base of it, like we did earlier on these ones, and just letting it bleed up and down into the stem. Four, I need another one, so we might just get one around. Here is crying out for one, probably. Sienna. And again, if you feel as though you must blot just to fade back a little bit, do, but they will fade quite nicely. We could probably get a few of those gum blossoms just up here too. One just opening up there, scruffy little things when they're opening up. Okay, now we need to start adding some detail over here to this Banksia. So a little bit of the burnt sienna and just a little bit of the black, but plenty of water. So I'm just using my round brush and I'm picking up a little bit of that colour what I my aim is to do is to just to darken up the center part of this banksia nut so I'm going to use a white pen on it and so I do like it to be a little bit darker so that I get a good contrast between the white pen and the banks here. Okay, a little bit more brown on this stem, I think. Ow. 
and possibly just a few because this is quite dark and the other parts are quite light I'm just going to use my script liner again and just um, add some more darker parts to this design So I could do that in the form of a few more twigs. Not too many. I just want to just add just a little bit, just to balance out. Okay, I've got one Banksy leaf down here that has no um, veins on it. Let's put those in. Remembering the tissue, just taking out little bits here and there. Again, just fading away. Okay, we'll do a little bit of splattering. Now, I don't want the splatters to go in this area here, so I'm just going to grab a tissue. Pop that on. And just using my round brush and the colours that I previously, previously used, that lovely green, I'll just make up a little bit more of that. Plenty of water in there. Just doing a little bit of splattering. Again, leaving that opening towards the top in here and lifting the tissue off just a little bit more in this area here always looking at the whole thing trying to balance out and possibly just a little bit more around here I want to keep the weight of the splatters towards the bottom um, that way it'll just be nice and balanced. Okay, now's the time to dry that off and put the very final touches on. We're on the last leg. We are, I've got a white gel pen and it's just a jelly roll. And I've also got a Micron Pigma fibre tipped pen and it's an O. But any fine tipped uh, fibre tip pen would be fine, or a gel pen. Now with the, I'm going to go with the white first and just start to add some details to my Banksia.
Now you could do this design with any of the uh, native flowers you have in your country or you could do it with seed pods So just gather them some little inspirational pieces around. It could be even just some shells. Some shells would look lovely on this design with some seaweed. So many things that you can do. Just doing some work on the branch here. some little dots they're quite textured if you remember I'm just showing you again what they look like there's one there's the other one got little dots in between it's just an impression of a banks here that I'm looking for One of our amazing little looking things. Um, the gum gum blossoms, we could possibly add a few more little delicate little petals to those. A few dots on those on the on the nut itself. Again, keeping it nice and loose. Keeping it very gentle. Gentle painting, that's what I'm calling it. Gentle painting. It's very relaxing with no pressure because you haven't got any really, really strong colours to contend with. It's just all very soft and ethereal and adding a little bit of highlight to some of the veins in the leaves And I think we're just about there with the gel pen. I really don't think that um, I can improve in any way. And that's what you've always got to be thinking about. Can I improve? A little bit of dust there from the Banksia cone. I've just got my um, fibre tipped pen here. I could add a little bit of texture to some of these stronger branches that we've got again not a lot to do with this one um, we could just add a few little in filler squiggles just keeping it all nice and loose so final touches are almost done I'm just going to go with a really fine brush now so just using the mix which was the black and the sienna and loading the brush and just rolling it to a point which I'm not getting with this brush so 
I may have to change my brush. That's better. So these are Australian natives here. So what I'm going to do is do some Australian black cockatoos. So you could think about your own birds in your country. So if you were doing shells, you might do some, some fish in here or some jellyfish. I'm just trying to, um, to give you ideas. Now I'm going to take some of the straight black, just add it to my cockatoo. Just letting that run. And do its own thing. Okay, one more. They generally fly around in pairs. Got a lot round here at this time due to all the banksias that are out at the moment. They love eating them. If you're in the UK doing the hedgerows or the hawthorn, you might think about all the birds that you have flying around. This would be perfect, this design for hedgerows. Or your garden, things from your garden. started to dry so it's not bleeding out so that's not a problem all you do is just get a clean brush a little bit of water on it and help it Okay, so um, just got to dry that off and add a little bit of detail to the birds and we're done. Okay, this is just a little bit of watercolour and it's almost straight from the tube. It's quite thick and I'm just going to add a little bit in here, a little bit there telltale sign it's a black cockatoo is having that little bit of yellow now 
I do like to incorporate colours that I've used in the painting, in the rest of the painting. So I'm just going to take a wash of that yellow now. So I've added a bit of water to it and just a little touch here and there. Just so that the yellow on the birds isn't by itself. And just finally, just taking that pen when I find it. There it is. I'm putting a beak on these birds. Just putting a little bit of detail on just some of the feathers. And really, um, this painting just needs signing. So, here we go. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, don't forget, this is definitely um, done nicely with inks, that little bit of watercolour right at the end. But you could, almost, you could definitely do it with watercolour, just thinning down your watercolour with um, plain water to get those washes. I hope you enjoy what you see and just give you a close up before I go. Anyway. Have fun, hope you enjoyed watching it and bye from me.